So if we move on to probably, in my opinion, one of the more interesting, maybe the most interesting part of this, the defence. Because as you, I'd say that's the leaky area for United. That's the area where maybe you know fans can dream about big signings like Khalidou Koulibaly and stuff like that. But you know, you may say Koulibaly's a move for now. There's also you know Milan Skriniar from Inter Milan. There's a lot of um, areas to talk about, but I feel like we should start in an area that me and someone else here have a lot of to talk about, and that's the left back position. Um, I mean, I'll go first since I'm talking. I'll just rally off. I think Luke Shaw even needs to be pushed or sold because we. The thing is with Luke Shaw is Man United fans, you know, certain Man United fans, and all the Man United fans here know which ones I'm talking about. Um, will be like, oh. Give Luke Shaw a chance, uh, nah, 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 nah. and but realistically, I look at it and everything Mourinho said about his lack of work ethic and him just not being ready to play. Mourinho was right. A lot of the things Mourinho said about Man United while he was there were right, and now people are starting to realise that that's coming true. But and Luke Shaw, you know, he plays well under competition, as Ashley spoke about earlier. When Williams came in, he started to perform. He started to look like one of the, probably you could say the third best left back in the league behind Robertson and Luca Dini. Um, but you know it's um, but it seems that only when you give him someone to push him he performs and that shouldn't be the case because I feel like he should be in a position where he's you know he's 24 he's still young should have stamped his authority I'm the next fullback that stays at this club for 15 years and no one can move me you know because it's not like Gary Neville was the most talented player you know it's Is Shaw you know, only 24? He, yeah Luke Shaw's only 24 yeah jeez it's like that, you, that, you forget how young he was when he joined. Yeah, you re- you really do. It shocked me when I found it out. But um, so I have thought my opinion would be sell Luke Shaw while you can. I think you could still get a decent amount of money for Luke Shaw due to his age and you know him being English. And you know you take a look around. You give someone who Nico William Nico sorry Brandon Williams. That that was almost an awful mistake. But we and I went to look. You know I went somewhere. Who people may look. I went into the Dutch league. I went. I looked in the Ajax squad, and I looked at the Argentinian fullback Nicolas Tagliafico as someone who could take that spot. And you know, I was. I'm looking at this in my, for my opinion, as a Pochettino team. So I look here to my left to look at what the squad I built, and it's a typical Pochettino four-two-three-one team. Bit so that may be a hint towards where this is going for a certain player who comes from France. But um, I looked at this and. The fullbacks for Spurs have always been, you know, very. They they were almost like box to box defenders, at fullback. You had Kyle Walker, who was a amazing defender, but also was talented going forward. And you had, you know, Danny Rose, who wasn't the most talented at either, but could do both at a serviceable level. And um, Pochettino brought the best out of him. So looking at Tagliafico, he is 27, and people may think, oh, so what's the point signing him for around 30 million pounds to stay two seasons? That's exactly the point. He can come in, have two great seasons. Williams can learn this sort of box-to-box sort of full-back mentality, this overlap, this comeback to defend, and it can develop him more. But if I tell you, just rattle off stats, for example, in his six appearances in the Champions League, he's averaging 4.5 tackles and three interceptions. For a full-back, that's insanity. In the Eredivisie, two and a half tackles, two interceptions. You know, and his offensive talents, it's not like they don't exist, you know. He has, you know about a key pass a game, a dribble a game. At fullback, you know, that's not exactly something to be doing a lot, you know. You expect, people still expect them to get back and defend more, even if you have, unless you're like Andy Robertson or um, Trent Alexander-Arnold. But I really think Tagliafico would be an immense signing, a very talented signing, um, offensively and defensively, who Williams can learn from. And then in two, three years' time, take the spot as that starting left back as he's proven he has the talent, in my opinion, to be a top left-back in the Premier League, from what I've seen. But um, moving on to someone who I know like wants to talk about a left-back a lot, Ashley, what do you think Man United should do with a left-back position? Yeah, so um, at the left-back position, I've actually agreed with you there. I said, get rid of Luke Shaw and bring in a an, an, an more bring in a more like defensive and attacking player. So I've gone with Alex Grimaldo at left-back. Um We've seen Ice Time in Benfica. He is a defender and an attacker. Um, last season, he actually got 12 assists and four goals in 34 appearances as a left back. I think that just speaks volumes of how he actually does defend and attacks. Um, his value is only 25 million as well. 
which is a which would be a bargain for a player like Alex Grimaldo. Um, he's, he's got 1.2 clearances a game, 1.7 dribbles, which which is a, for a left back. You expect those stats from like a midfielder, <laughs> not 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 a left back. And um, I think Alex Grimaldo would fit into fit, fit into United team alongside Williams at left back, who could push Grimaldo, or could he he could like Will <laughs> Williams could push Grimaldo to perform and Grimaldo would perform under that pressure that Williams is putting on him. He had four goals last season, which Luke Shaw doesn't bring goals to the team. Luke Shaw doesn't bring assists to the team. Grimaldo could bring that to the team and this and this would be a Pochettino team that I'm looking at as well, if, if, to agree with Gaffer here. Um, so I think, yeah, Alex Grimaldo would be the perfect left-back to replace Luke Shaw. Uh. Yeah, and uh, just another thing to look at. I just um, I'm on Tagliafico's Who Scored page here, so I I just decided to scroll down a bit to show me his value. But one thing I found out is his characteristics, which is basically his strengths and his weaknesses. According to Who Scored, Tagliafico has no significant weaknesses as a fullback. You know, if you don't have any significant weaknesses, you can't really say no to the opportunity. But uh, since we're talking about defence in general, you know, we hi- we both highlighted um, left back as a, maybe a problem area that they need to fix. Um, Theo, is there a specific part of the defence you would change or would you keep it all the same? Uh, I think for me, the centre-back next to Maguire is, the, is what we need to target next. I actually disagree with both of you. I think Shaw uh, was probably in the best form of his career before lockdown. Uh, he was doing really well. And again, I, like, I've always been frustrated with Shaw because like sometimes I look at him and I think like you're obviously quick just just like push up you know like, sometimes he, he just always passes the ball backwards to the to Maguire or whoever's the left centre back instead of just pushing down the wing sometimes but um, like a lot of players since Fernandez came in it's just like his form's been infectious and he's just like Shaw was playing so well so I, I definitely keep Shaw especially with Williams pushing him but yeah, a centre back next to Maguire would be my um, my pick for like the next thing to to go for. Probably a, a quicker quicker centre back than um, than Maguire. Maguire's like strong and he reads the game well, but he's not necessarily the quickest, and he'll probably get done done for pace by a lot of the the pacey forwards. Um, we we've got Bai, we've got Tu and Zebi, uh, who are both quick, but. Like Tunzebi's young and he's learning, and by like sometimes he's the best centre back in the world. Sometimes he's like championship level. Like he just gives away the most stupid. He's he's so frustrating because you watch him sometimes. You think you have everything for a centre back, and then sometimes he just does the most stupid challenges. And then Wan I don't think I need to say anything about him. Like he's amazing. So yeah, right, 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 right centre back is where I would target. I, I don't know who I'd pick. So would you bring um, back Chris Small in for you? Um, see, I, I see a lot of people mention that, but I sort of, I sort of feel like just let the guy enjoy his life in Italy. Like he's he's got away from all the people taking the mick out of him and stuff like constantly, and he's clearly doing well. I know that's not like obviously in football, like if Solskjaer looks at him and says, You'd be good for my team, he's not going to care about whether Smalling is enjoying his life in Italy. He just wants him in the team. So uh, I don't know how old Smalling is now. Is he like 30? Over 30? Yeah, he's 30. Yeah. yeah. So I, I think we should probably. I know people will say Kulabai, he'd be like 100 million, and I'm pretty sure he's like 28, 29. So I, I, I can't give you a like a a perfect player for centre-back. But I just think a centre-back to partner Maguire um, is, is needed because Maguire, I think, is uh, also got better as the season went on. Uh, but Lindelof, uh, Bailly and Tuanzebi, and certainly Rojo, obviously, thank, thank God he's gone. I'm forgetting about Jones as well. Uh, <laughs> but like you forget he's here sometimes. Um, they're not consistent enough, so we you need like a top centre back next to Maguire, and hopefully that would start a, a good partnership. Uh, yeah, and um, I could probably you know come straight out and suggest a centre back for this United team. Um, 
as soon as you said quick, someone who can get off the ball, I've been obviously I've spent a lot of time and you'll you'll have heard me in the thing rave about RB Leipzig, a team I've watched a lot of during the thing. So if I jump over to a certain centre back, he may have had a poor performance last game getting himself a red card against Paderborn. But someone who I perfectly... It's a lot of money. It's like 50, 60 million. But for a 21-year-old centre-back, it's, it's, I think it's good money. He's a dial up a Meccano out of like... So it's, a lot, you know, it's, a lot of money to, it's a lot of money to spend. But for a 21-year-old centre-back who can, you know, who has... He's got that pace and that power. He's sort of like... He's, it's a weird comparison, but I, I, or I see a lot of... Um, Leon Umti in Umti's last season for his big move to Barcelona, that power and that you know that movement ability, you know, in, he's only averaging around two tackles and one point five interceptions. But it's how quickly he can quickly close down an attacker at centre back. You know, he can he can he's not exactly small either. He can you know rough them up a little bit, and his ability to move around quickly will help Harry Maguire so much more as someone who can lead a defence, someone who may not be the most mobile and, you know, relies on his tackling on someone coming into him and maybe him reading a passing lane or maybe him making a smart slide tackle instead of, um, you know, just um, brute force tackling with speed and power like someone like Open Meccano can. And, you know, a lot of people are saying Koulibaly, I am on the same boat as for you and the Koulibaly, he's 28, 29. Um, I think it is best to just go out and get someone younger who can build with, you know, Harry Maguire is not the oldest, I believe. Is Harry Maguire 25, 26? I think yeah, right I, 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 think, I think he's... Honestly, I don't know, but he's, I think he's 25, 26. I think, I think that's yeah. right. But, um, yeah, get someone like Upper Meccano. You know, Man United have proven they've got the money. Like, we're in, an, a, yeah, we're in a, an economy crisis because of the COVID-19 issues. And they're saying, OK, yeah, don't worry. We can come and splash 100 million on Jaden Sancho. That's easy money. There you go. But... Um, yeah, I think, um, you know, I think even in my system where, um, you know, I would have kept Lindelof and let him develop a little bit, you know, may, maybe be a bit of a come on late sort of centre-back and someone who can develop. Because I've seen Lindelof, you know, he has a little bit of a burst in him. You see that Lindelof can move every now and again. But, uh, yeah, even in my system, Upper Meccano would fit perfectly alongside Harry Maguire, um, who I believe has got a lot of slack. But, obviously, it's the price tag that gets him that slack. It's not exactly his ability of a player, when you're costing around the same as Virgil van Dijk, people are naturally just going to compare you to Virgil van Dijk. That's just how the world works. But, you know, we it looks like we've basically agreed on that maybe um, a centre-back needs a change and the right the right back stays the same. We don't even need to go into Aaron wan When Aaron wan yeah. develops that attacking side more, he's going to be the best right back in the world, in my opinion. Yeah, he's got it all for defensive. Um, and it's a shame for him, really, that uh, he'd probably be England's number one right back if it wasn't for Alexander Arnold. Um, but like like we were saying, with having competition for places, like maybe maybe that will spur him on. Maybe like going into I might get a stick from the United fans saying it, but maybe going into training and like working with him, he might improve on his attacking. And I'm sure Solskjaer will obviously do that. But seeing like another right back, the same, the pretty much the same age. Um, like I'm sure that that will show him, like what what he can do. So yeah, exactly. I, I think attacking from Wan Bissaka can definitely do much better. Um, but uh, yeah, definitely number one right back for us. I can't see that changing. Speaking of right back, though, we also have Diogo Dalo at right back. Um, I think if we loan out Diogo Dalo, he could improve so much if he goes out on loan. I think. If he does go out on loan, that would be the making of Diogo Dallo. Um, as, as we saw against, I think it was Tranmere we played, he, he scored a goal in that game from right back. And he, he, in that game, he was so attacking, he was so good at attacking and both and, and defending. And we've also got Ethan Laird, who is maybe on par with Aaron wan as in just raw, raw defending talent. But he doesn't get mentioned as much as I would like him to. But he is, he is on par with the talent that Aaron wan does possess. Yeah, I'd I'd say with um with Dallo, he put in some really good performances last year. Like we didn't really see him for most of the first half of the season, and then with a lot of the the big games that Solskjaer probably got the job for, like PSG, I remember him playing right wing instead of right back, um, and he did very really well. So maybe we might actually use him more um, as a right winger, like because sometimes Solskjaer plays three at the back uh, with five five across the midfield. 
um, and Dallow plays as the the like right um, the right mid, which he might be able to do that better than Wan Bissaka. Wan Bissaka might be better as like a right centre back in that in that formation for like big games. Um, so yeah, like. I don't know if I'd loan him out because he can play right back and left back, which is pretty useful when you've got, like, I don't know if we'll, we'll see with Champions League for next year, like we might be in Europa League, which comes with a lot of games. So having someone that can play both sides and further up the pitch is pretty useful for, for a manager. So I wouldn't say loan him out, but I do agree that um, he, he has a lot more to give and he's definitely being underused at the moment. But that's not his fault. Like, he's got wan in front of him. Yeah. Right, so, last but not least, Harvey, what do you think about the Manchester United defence and what would you do with it? Um, I'm going to keep it short and sweet. I think, uh, right back, you know, I think we all agree on that. With wan being young and the talent that he's shown, uh, I think that gives him a place in the squad, guaranteed. Um, I, th- I could be a bit of a madman for saying this, but I... I do think that uh, maybe giving Chris Smalling uh, a chance when he comes back from his loan spell to partner with Maguire could be the call. So maybe not splashing out on an 80 million defender or whatever, maybe giving the chance. Yes, it might hurt their form, but you know, if I was that club, I would rather take the risk of losing a few games than losing 80 million pounds um, in a bad investment or something like that. And then, as far as left back goes, um, I say play Brandon Williams. Uh, and if Luke Shaw wants to put the work in, he will. And he wants that first team place, he will. If he doesn't, the Brandon Williams, young, he's already shown that he's he fits the mould of a modern fullback with the um, the get forward, the pace. I'm pretty sure he's he scored a couple of times um, last season, start of this season. Um, all very promising signs from a player so young. So. Yeah, easy for me. Um, keep right back the same. Let Chris Smalling come back in with Maguire, at least for a few games. Um, and Brandon Williams starts over Luke Shaw. 